I was in first grade when drawing class was cut from the curriculum of my school. Soon after, we forgot there ever was a drawing class, but that one hour of fun, free expression had been erased from our day-to-day -day lives. When I was in fourth grade, music class was cut. That class I especially liked because we got to sing, and I love to sing. I remember our teacher put tape on the floor in the shape of a grand staff, and we were asked to hop from bar to line to bar so that we could memorize the notes better. Now, I was already taking piano lessons, so I knew most of them, of course. I felt pretty cool. However, due to budget cuts and a culture that didn't seem to understand the value of a skill like imagination that cannot be tested, I would no longer have that class. And something changed. I saw firsthand how a lack of art and free expression affected my generation. Sitting still in classrooms all day became more tiring than ever. Lunches were soon shortened, recesses were shortened. Without words, an order of priorities had been stated and art was nowhere on that list. I began to wonder, why can't I be artistic and intelligent? Why do so many creative minds who can't be fit into a box struggle to succeed in their schooling environments, and what does that tell us about the schooling? I began to grapple with the idea that I was living in a society that praised innovation and entrepreneurship, but did not provide an educational experience that encouraged the cultivation of that same creativity. I watched so many of my friends become more lost at the end of their educational experience than they had been at the beginning. Today, much of our global schooling systems either do not prioritize art or do not provide it at all, taking away an incredibly powerful avenue of self-expression and suppressing the imagination of children. Myself and so many others felt stifled in our creativity by our educational experience. I think that the value of art today is often underrated because it, because it is completely unquantifiable and subjective. Watching a hip hop dance performance or seeing a painting could mean nothing to one person, but everything to someone else. In this way, art gives humans the opportunity to connect with each other and individuals the opportunity to connect deeper to themselves. This is a skill young people need more now today than ever in a world that constantly undervalues emotional intelligence and the development of character. Often, we do not provide our young people with the tools to express themselves, discover themselves, decide what they're passionate about and give them the space to nurture that passion. So after years of constant conflict between wanting to be a good student who gets good grades and wanting to spend more time in the dance studio or writing music, time to sit down with my family and friends or to just be a kid, I decided to leave public school to pursue an online option. I hoped it would provide me with the freedom to focus on my art, the development of my character and identity. I wanted the space to express myself and discover myself. At the end of just one year, I did not think I had found the answer. I felt socially isolated from my community. While it's true that I had certainly become more connected to myself through my art, I felt disconnected from my peers and punished for choosing my own unique path to pursue my passion instead of following the conventional route. So I tried something else. At 14, I decided to move 13 hours away from home to go to a boarding arts high school. I became immersed in a drastically different culture where young people were encouraged to be artistic and creative where we were believed when we told adults what we were passionate about. 
Our art was respected, and through it, our voices were truly valued. I thought to myself, if this culture can thrive in some tiny mountain community in the West Coast, why not everywhere? We need a cultural shift that encourages artistic expression as much as we encourage academic proficiency. We need to allow young people and people everywhere to express themselves in a way that develops the soul and not just the mind. Art empowers the youth to feel and to think. We cannot continue to discredit young people's passions, dwindle their abilities to think outside of the box, and then question why they aren't immediately innovators the second they turn 18. It isn't helping the youth now, and it won't help us as we begin to build up our society. We must give our young people access to art and gift them with its freeing power through our educational experience. Albert Einstein once said, that imagination is more important than knowledge. We must make the statement as a society through giving art back to the schools that we value creativity as much as intelligence. I believe that this reasoning can be taken a step further. True intelligence requires creativity. Imagine how different our world might look if every building was made with the intention of being creative the intention of being beautiful. Art allows young people to express themselves in an uncensored way in an extremely monitored society. It provides the necessary space for an individual to have self and world reflection, becoming more connected to themselves, their communities, and to develop emotional intelligence. Despite this revelation, I began to feel so helpless what could I do to change the mindset of an entire world? Me, some 17-year-old Senegalese-American girl living in Eugene, Oregon, who loves writing songs and is not the queen of the planet, tragically. <laughs> and then it hit me. The way we will change our society is by changing the people within it. If we were able to change our minds about the power of art in schools, why couldn't we change the mind of our culture? If we want to advance as a global community, we need innovators. We need creatives. As one person in a generation full of anxiety, depression, and lack of purpose, I know the power of art because it has literally changed who I am, how I express my ideas and curiosity, and how I see myself in the world. Creative minds who don't conform to the one-size-fits-all educational experience should not be struggling to thrive in their educational environments. Instead, we should be asking ourselves what we can do to support them, to grow their abilities in an engaging way, and encourage the mind to do what it does, create. Too many students today are taught that to achieve success, we must work hard to be equally good at many things, and we are discouraged from diving deeper into something we really care about. This is not the mindset that creates entrepreneurs. Unconventional thinkers should be uplifted and supported by society, not punished. So what can we all do to help fix this problem? We can encourage young people in our lives to express themselves through art, to exercise creativity and the imagination as these are the values of an innovative society. Today, I would like to encourage you all to seek, speak, and connect. Seek out art in your community. Take a painting class or a dance class. Write a song, make a sculpture, and see how they make you feel. Speak with the people around you. Sit down and talk about art and arts education with peers who may not think the same thing as you. And lastly, Connect. Connect with your local representatives, 
teachers, community leaders, write a letter, make a phone call. Let them know that you care about art in schools and are calling upon them to advocate for those values. Because artistic, creative, passionate people are more successful. Thank you. Thank you.